I'm Mike Cooper, and this is my story. Sort of in the family, really. Um, my uncle playing for Warrington and, and coaching Warrington and Paul Cullen, and I vividly remember the Sundays at my nan and granddad's house and everyone around the table, and um, you know, rugby league was always what the men talked about, you know, and that's probably where it started. I sort of remember going to the games and seeing the atmosphere and seeing how the noise and all that sort of stuff, and it, it was something you want to be a part of, but I was always I was football mad as a kid. And, that's all I really wanted to do until I was about 11 and then I think it was a tag rugby game sort of got me into, into rugby league and, and was scouted and then it just sort of went from there and you know we finished playing rugby at school and, and go to the rugby league training at night time and, and whatever else. Where we grew up there was a rugby field on the back and we'd spend most evenings out there you know practicing with my dad and continuously nagging him to come out and play and which he always did even after the full day of work and um, you know, I really appreciate that now as a father, how much how hard it is to, to work and then come home at six o'clock and be in the back field playing playing rugby. Paul was in charge, and at, at that point, I'd been in and around the first team. I was I was just started at college, but had a lot of injuries at the time and. Um, got picked to play at Cass and I think we got beat. It wasn't a great day for the club and Benny Westwood gets a smack from Graviani and I think Paul Wood had a fight and as a young forward going on and two of the senior players you know, involved in fights, it was pretty nerve wracking. And I was actually physically sick on the sideline, I was warming up, just so nervous, you know, and um, but just loved it. The siren's gone, the siren's gone and Jan Cooper on his debut. It'll be a debut he'll want to forget but it's a try he will want to remember. I think I then ended up playing another three games that year and then maybe another six or seven the year after and they had the, uh, the leg break and then he ended up getting pneumonia off the back of that from being in surgery and, and I spent about eight, eight, nine days in intensive care off, off the back of that. So. It was a um, big mental challenge for me, uh, something that I wasn't expecting. And, and anybody who's had a, a near-death experience, you know, I was told very, very clearly straight away when I woke up that I wasn't expected to live. And that changes your mindset. And it probably took me a, a number of years to get my head around that. Um, there wasn't a lot of support, you know, at the time in terms of counselling and things like that. And as a young person, it's a tough thing to go through and you're not, you just don't know how to deal with it. And, um, but it was really now I use that as, as a driving force. It's something that, um, you know, I can openly talk about something that I'm uh, very proud that I over overcame that situation and more upsetting for everybody else that's around, you know, there and mum and dad obviously were with me 24-7 so, and brother, so yeah, that was an upsetting time for them, but I use it as fuel now. Adrian Morley is a huge inspiration for me and a great uh, moment for me was when he, when he was announced at the club to be signing for us and, and be our captain and, you know, his presence around the place and then the standards that he set straight away. You know, little things like body language, standing up, not putting your hands on your hips when you're tired. Things that you probably take for granted, you don't realise you're doing as, as human beings, you know, um, you stood still or whatever. It's about standing up straight, sticking your chest out, never showing any weakness and never complaining about anything. And just the way he, he played the game, that was a big inspiration. And, you know, I've got to know Moz really, really well now and, and, and played with him at Warrington for a number of years. And, um, you know, it's kind of cool when you get to play alongside your, you know, your heroes. So we start off with the... Um... 2013 Grand Final and I can't actually see who scored there but one of the Grand Finals that we were leading in at half time. In all three Grand Finals that I played we were winning at half time, uh, we were doing particularly well in, the, in those games and the wheels fell off in all those games and I think as a club that's kind of summed it up for us is that we've been there or thereabouts but not been able to get over the line and I guess that only comes with experience and uh, that's part of the reason, uh, the big reason why we won the Challenge Cup last year was and, and everyone wrote us off was we had we've been there so many times before. Daryl Clark runs to the left to win it. Daryl Clark reaches and scores. Will surely now be a Challenge Cup final victory. It's amazing, and obviously you focus for the game, but obviously during the game we're just like, this is happening, this is happening. There was never any doubt we were going to win that game. It was never a question in my mind. Prince Harry, you know, I give the trophy, and I won't repeat what he said, but. You know, he basically said, don't effing drop it. You know, it's just a funny, a surreal experience. We want to win the grand final and there is no excuses. You know, but we've sort of said it and I think Carl Lulawai said it, we don't talk about it anymore. You know, the rule is you don't talk about the grand final and, uh, you know, that's, that's sort of an obvious one for us. 
you know, I've been a part of this team for 10 years and there's been fantastic squads play for Warrington. I firmly believe we've got one of the best, if not the best, that we've ever had. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who tonight is all about. 215 wire appearances, 7 England caps with 18 tries. Please put your hands together for Mike Cooper! You know, it's a great achievement for him. You know, a special person. And he's a humble person. He's all about, you know, the team first. As a club, we're, you know, we're very driven to make sure that it's a uh, special night for him. It's been a fantastic season for the club. He was here when I was a kid coming through, when obviously when I was 17, 2012. So he was still obviously pretty young lad himself, but uh, he was a great leader and he's just a fantastic bloke and a bit one to learn on. Well, he's certainly reliable. You know, he's one of our most consistent players here. Um, I think anyone that has this duration at any one club is, is, you know, fantastic. And certainly for the service he's given the club has been integral to the successes we've had. Hopefully at the end of this season, um, it'll be a grand final. Yeah, he's, had a, he's had a great career. Um, I'm so obviously grateful for him to be uh, one set small enough to play this game. So it'll be, be a great occasion for him tonight. It's a pleasure to come up and see him wearing the Warrington colours and hopefully many years to come. The physical side of the game has always appealed to me. It's the, it's the bit that I enjoy the most. And you know, rugby league is a, is a great sport for testing yourself at all times. There's moments in the game when you're completely out on your feet and, and your teammates are, and you've got to encourage them and, and get through it yourself. And it can be a, a mental battle as much as it is a physical battle. So um, as I'm getting older, that's what I, I appreciate the most. And, is my teammates around me and how, and how hard the actual sport is.